Now let's talk about the Schaefer Commission and what happened with this fiasco. So 50 years ago, what should have saved tens of millions of Americans from unjust arrests occurred and was promptly dismissed by President Richard Nixon. Uh, the National Commission on Marijuana and Drug Abuse, which was better known as the Schaefer Commission, delivered its report after two years of research, concluding that marijuana should not be illegal. And the report was supposed to determine how the Nixon administration would treat marijuana with, within that Controlled Substances Act, which is still today the ultimate authority in terms of drug legality. Under the guidance of former Pennsylvania governor, um, the Republican Raymond Schaefer, the commission analyzed why marijuana is considered to be a problem. And it correctly points out the fact that alcohol is much more dangerous to someone's health and far more commonly consumed, yet it's not considered to be a societal ill like marijuana was at the time. So for many, marijuana symbolized disorder, and that's how the report read. It also said, for decades, its use was mainly confined to the underprivileged socioeconomic groups in our cities and to certain insulated social groups, like jazz musicians and artists. And as long as it remained confined to these groups, the vast majority of Americans remained unconcerned. Marijuana is a recreational drug that was traditionally limited to African Americans and Mexican immigrants which the Schaefer Report diplomatically referred to as underprivileged socioeconomic groups in our cities. But when the rebellious youth started challenging the racial imbalance that was inherent to American society in the 60s, marijuana was held up by conservatives as a symbol of race mixing and the rabble contaminating the youth's minds alongside the rock music and sexual liberation. So marijuana symbolizes the cultural divide and the report said any statement frequently repeated in public assumes the status of fact. And with so many people continually arguing about marijuana, the public has understandably become alarmed and confused. And the link between Americans' rejection of marijuana and race cannot be understated. Before the 1900s, it was always referred to by its proper name, cannabis. The word marijuana, spelled with a J, itself, and its equivalent, marijuana, with the rolled H instead of the J, only exists because American conservatives wanted a word that sounded Mexican to incite Americans to hate what it describes. And when the architect of marijuana prohibition, Harry Anslinger, testified before Congress to ban cannabis, he presented as evidence a letter from the Alamosa Daily Courier in Colorado, and it read, quote, I wish I could show you what a small marijuana cigarette can do to one of our degenerate Spanish-speaking residents. That's why our problem is so great. The greatest percentage of our population is composed of Spanish-speaking persons, most of who are low mentally, comma, because of social and racial conditions. So once they realized the root of rejection of marijuana by the conservative American society, the Schaefer Commission looked at the health and social consequences of marijuana use. And they noted that heavy marijuana users can have a form of psychological dependence, but not physical dependence. And they found no harm done by marijuana. There's a quote in there that says, there is little proven danger of physical or psychological harm from the experimental or intermittent use of the natural preparations of cannabis, including hashish. So the only potential harm done by marijuana identified by the Schaefer Commission was present in only 2% of marijuana users, and it was purely a potential emotional instability that linked to heavy daily use of marijuana. The report said, unfortunately, these marijuana related problems, which occur only in heavy long term users, have been overgeneralized and over dramatized. The Atlantic journalist Eric Schlosser reported on the consequences of the Mexican Revolution of 1910, which led to a wave of Mexican immigration in Texas. The prejudices and fears that greeted these peasant immigrants also extended to their traditional means of intoxication, smoking marijuana. 
Police officers in Texas claimed that marijuana incited violent crimes, aroused the lust for blood, and gave its users superhuman strength. And this is the sort of absurdities that were widely believed by opponents of marijuana, largely due to the general racist sentiment permeating American society, regardless of the facts. So the belief that marijuana causes or leads to the commission of violent or aggressive acts first emerged during the 1930s and became deeply embedded in the public mind. And Schaefer noted, before presenting the results of months of systematic review of all the available data at the time and the results of several studies sponsored by the commission itself, he said, no substantial evidence exists of a casual connection between the use of marijuana and the commission of violent or aggressive acts. Indeed, if any relationship was indicated, it was not a positive and direct connection, but an inverse or negative statistical correlation. Rather than inducing violent or aggressive behavior through its purported effects, marijuana was usually found to inhibit the expression of aggressive impulses by pacifying the user, interfering with muscular coordination, reducing psychomotor activities, and generally producing states of drowsiness, lethargy, tim timidity, and passivity. So ultimately, the Schaefer Commission made recommendations, which were the very reason why its members were appointed in the first place regarding marijuana. And they recommended that the government should focus on studying cannabis and its potential medical uses. The heavy marijuana users should be referred to community-based treatment facilities that the federal and state governments should separate marijuana from, from opiates and that marijuana should not be criminalized. And Nixon went on to bury that report and take none of the recommendations that were made within it. So the Controlled Substances Act of 1970 separated drugs into schedules based on dangerousness. And this act is culpable for placing marijuana at the very top in Schedule 1, alongside heroin and ecstasy and peyote. And every drug in Schedule 1, in theory, has no medicinal use and it has a high risk of abuse. And as the U.S. government itself owns a patent regarding medical use of marijuana, which is U.S. patent um, U.S.663-0507-B1, which determined that cannabinoids have a value in treating age-related inflammatory and autoimmune diseases, marijuana does not fall under the definition of Schedule I drugs. In fact, this is something that the Schaefer Commission specifically called out in the 1972, uh, the commission, it said, the commission recommends that the legislatures distinguish marijuana from opiates. The consequence of inappropriate definition is that the public continues to associate marijuana with narcotics such as heroin. The confusion resulting from this improper classification helps to perpetuate prejudices and misinformation about marijuana. So then how did harmless marijuana even end up in a Schedule I alongside deadly uh, opioids? Well, it was initially supposed to be a temporary measure while the Schaefer Commission worked to determine which legal status should be given to marijuana. Assistant Secretary of Health Roger Egberg stated it explicitly in a letter to the chairman of the House Committee on Interstate and Foreign Commerce. He said, marijuana is presently classed in Schedule I alongside with its active constituents, the tetrahydrocannabinols and other psychotropic drugs. Some question has been raised whether the use of the plant itself produces severe psychological or physical dependence as required by a Schedule I or even Schedule II criterion. Since there is still a considerable void in our knowledge of the plant and effects of the active drug contained in it, our recommendation is that marijuana be retained within Schedule 1 at least until the completion of certain studies now underway to resolve the issue. That is how the letter read. But when the Schaefer Report, which Egbert refers to as, quote unquote, certain studies now underway, when it finally came out, the Nixon administration decided to ignore their findings entirely. President Nixon said, even if the commission does recommend that it be legalized, I will not follow that recommendation. The New York Times reported in 1972, 
The National Commission on Marijuana and Drug Abuse has unanimously decided to recommend that all criminal penalties for the private use and possession of marijuana be eliminated. No state has gone this far, and the recommendations of the conservatively oriented 13-member commission, which includes nine members appointed by President Nixon, could generate a dramatic shift in the public's attitudes towards the legal status of the drug. So, obviously the newspaper was far too optimistic. The reasons why Nixon chose to ignore common sense and science and the advice of his own appointees are not particularly mysterious. Nixon's top aide, John Ehrlichman, uh, famously admitted what they were. He said the Nixon White House had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people. We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. <laughs> so in order to serve Nixon's short-term political goals, the findings of the Schaefer Commission were buried, and more than 500,000 Americans have been arrested every single year for half a century for nonviolent, harmless possession of psychoactive plants that never had any reason to be criminalized. Even today, police arrest more people for benign possession of marijuana alone than for all violent crimes committed combined.